Hello, I was putting together a video today and I realized that I had accidentally deleted a whole bunch of footage, um, so I just stuck it together. This is going to be the intro for that video. Uh, the video is explaining how I took a motor and converted it to spin a whole 360 degrees from um, it being stopped mechanically to only spin 180. Typically this motor was used in a, Cher a Jeep Cherokee for the rear windshield wiper where it only needed to go back and forth, back and forth. For the use that I'm doing, I needed to spin 360. So this is how I do it. Um, I think there's enough details to explain it on this video. So we'll just go ahead and get into it. Satellite rotator, I came across this gear motor well, this worm gear motor. Um, I found out from searching part numbers that it's from a Jeep Cherokee and it's the actual back wish windshield wiping motor. Um, I removed the control board that just kept it basically oscillating, but there's one more piece that I need to remove in order to turn this into a continuous motor to work for my needs. And that is this little nub right here. So how that nub works is this line right here is where that nub sets and it just continues and stops so the motor's only doing the back and forth part for the windshield wipers. So that's a mechanical stop and there's two ways that you could do this. You could come in here and just cut all of these pieces out but if you do that you're losing some of the strength that's been given there. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to take my Dremel, it's right there, and cut the nub out of here and then sand it off as smooth as I can once I cut that nub out and make it so the motor will just continuously spin. Then I'll take advantage of the worm drive to raise and do the azimuth and elevation on my, uh, well, to do the elevation. The azimuth's already handled. Um, I bought this motor at a junk store for like five bucks. Normally they're a $90 motor, so I don't recommend you buy a new one. Um, I'm just going to take advantage of something that I have that is cheap. So I got it all filed down and I believe I got it to clear. It's a little bit lower right there just because the, the way that it went in. Since it was aluminum, it was really easy just to take this really fine grit sandpaper here on um, my Dremel and pretty much make it even after I did some notch cutting. The tool was a little bit large to get in there, so I have some dings up there, but that's not a big uh, big deal. To clean this uh, powdered aluminum now <laughs> out of there, um, which I really want to do so it doesn't bind up the gears, I'm just going to take alcohol to clean off the grease and then scrub it down really well and then let it dry. And then I'll come back in, solder some wires to these contact points, uh, along with some bypass caps to help make it so it's not noisy when it switches on or off or reverse or backwards and um, get ready to install it onto my pan tilt bracket. So I got the motor all cleaned up and put the gear back in and soldered these wires on to test it with and showed that yes it's now running continuously. So now what I'm going to do next is this is the dust cover that fits on here like this and then the control board would have fit right here. Um, what I'm going to do now, what I've already done, is I've laid down this masking tape on some black ABS plastic that I have on hand and I'm just going to take some tin snips and cut this out to make a new dust cover for that. Uh, there were some contacts that fit down in this part and really I just want to make sure that this thing isn't going to cause, uh, it, there's not going to be any dust getting into the gear worm while I'm using it. Um, I guess I could find the other cover piece and just put that on for a temporary thing, but I really would like to get all this other plastic out of the way. And so that's what I'm going to do. Uh, this is just a rough guess, so once I get it on here I'm going to have to do some notching around this piece and back where the motor is to make sure that everything fits just right. Um, but I'm hoping that will give me a good dust cover so I won't have to worry about dust getting into this. So I'm going to go ahead and proceed to that. So you could see that got me roughed into there, front and back. Oh, my hand's right in the way. 
like that and just slid it into there and I'm not gonna have to chafe out as much around that motor but on this side kind of see I'm gonna take and retrace that again cut it down one more time and then go ahead and fit it in to those screw slots so I'm gonna do that part and then I'll have a nice dust cover so there I go oh man it's hard to see out in this bright light but it's all cleaned up now um, as cleaned up as I'm gonna get it I'm now gonna go in and mark the holes and uh, set the screws the screws go in this direction so they'll be on the outside of the rough side and I'll take that tape off and that will keep dust from getting into there and then I'm ready to go mount it to the next part so very happy if all this is rolling along I'll give it a test to see if it's gonna be able to lift up that antenna now there's my motor running continuously after making those modifications. I forgot to shoot the video of it rotating before I had it mounted onto my satellite rotator where I'm going to use that motor. But um, with its high torque, it's doing great. For that portion, I'm sure it'll have enough strength to turn the antenna that I plan on putting on it. And um, I will actually give a full demo of that one after I build the rest of the portions of the controller but yeah it works really great it has a lot of strength so we'll see you in the next video